everybody, Miss Cole here, bringing you another Kids Church lesson. Today, the title of our lesson is Jesus Raises Lazarus from Death. It's found in the book of John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 44. Now, Jesus was really good friends with Martha, Mary, and their brother Lazarus. As a matter of fact, he was often a guest at their home when he would be traveling and he would come through, he would stay at their house. And Jesus gets word that Lazarus is sick. And Mary and Martha have called Jesus to come and pray for their brother so that their brother could be healed. So what do you think Jesus is going to do? Hmm. Well, you might think that Jesus is going to rush to go help Lazarus. I mean, they're friends. They're good friends. I would, if I asked my friend to come help me, I'm sure they would leave everything they have and come get me and come help me. But something unexpected happened. Jesus stays where he is with his disciples. And then there's emotions running high. Like, are you kidding me, Jesus? Lazarus is one of your good friends and he's in need. But Jesus wants it to keep it simple because Jesus knows that God has a greater plan than what Martha and Mary and even the disciples can see at that moment. So after three days have passed, Jesus says, you know what? It's time for us to go to Bethany and check on Martha and Mary. And his disciples, they're afraid to go because at this time, Jesus was causing a little bit of a disturbance with the religious leaders and they didn't know what they were going to do with Jesus. And the disciples, they were afraid. And Jesus says, you know what? While it is daytime, I've got to be doing the work that God has sent me to do. So the disciples were like, all right. If you say we're going, Jesus, we're going to go and we're expecting you to get killed on the way. And guess what? We're ready to die with you, too. That's not what happens. But Jesus gets there and the first one to greet him is Martha. And she comes out to Jesus and she's like, Jesus, if only you were here, my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. And Jesus he has great compassion on Martha and he says, don't you know that I am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me will never die? And Martha's like, Lord, I do believe that, that you are the Messiah. And then Martha goes in the house and she gets Mary and says, Mary, the teacher, he's calling for you. He wants to see you. So Mary goes out to greet Jesus and Mary, she's just overcome. Her brother has passed away. He has not recovered from his sickness. She doesn't know what she's going to do. And she just falls at Jesus's feet because she's just so sad. And Jesus, you know, he was good friends with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and seeing their agony, Jesus was full of anguish as well. And Jesus cried. He loved his friends very much. And he wasn't being mean by staying where he was when he heard the word that Lazarus was stick, sick. He had the bigger picture in mind. He knew what was going to happen to Lazarus. So Jesus says, Martha, show me where you've put Lazarus. So they go to the grave. They go to the cave. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And guess what? He did. He got up out of the grave, came walking out in his grave clothes, and Jesus is like, get him unwrapped. He's no longer dead. He's alive. And this reveals to us that no matter what is happening, God's timing is perfect. God's perfect timing was so that Jesus could reveal who he truly was to all those people, not just to save Lazarus, but to save all those people who were seeing this awesome miracle. You know, sometimes in life we have hard times where it seems like God isn't listening. 
I recall when we were getting ready to move from our home in Mishapin to a new house, we thought we had found a good house. It was just up the road a little ways, so we weren't going to have to move far. The kids could still be around their same friends from the street. But you know what? That was not the house God had for us. And God very clearly put different things in our pathway to let us know that, no, this isn't the house. Well, I didn't know what we were going to do. We, we had to be out of our house. The house was getting sold that we had been living in for 10 years. But you know what? Because of that, we found a better house with more room for our family, more yard for our animals to play in, a better neighborhood, closer to our schools, because God knew the bigger picture. I just could see right then and there that I needed a new house, and this one was close by, it was a good price, but that's not what God had in store for me. God had better things for me. Kind of like sometimes when you might want a cookie before dinner and mom and dad say, no cookies. It's not because they don't love you. As a matter of fact, they love you so much that they want you to get good nutritious food in you before you just get the sugar. So they tell you no. And it's the same way with God. God knows everything and he knows what's best for us. And so sometimes God says, wait. And that's what Mary and Martha had to do. They waited and then the better thing came to them. And God wants to give you the better thing too. Our scripture verse for today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Mary and Martha, they were sad. Jesus was sad. Lazarus was dead. They wept and were sad. But when Jesus came, when the morning came, joy came. Mary and Martha and Lazarus and all their friends, they rejoiced because whatever is happening, God's timing is perfect. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that your timing is always perfect. Even in the hard places of life, kind of like this crisis we're going through now with the COVID-19, even in this hard place, Jesus, your timing is perfect. Would you please reveal the joy that comes when we know that you have everything under control? Lord, would you Bless my friends. Would you speak to my friends? Would you help them to love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength? Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Now remember, stay in the word, stay in prayer, and stay connected. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi guys, Miss Cole here with a craft to go along with our lesson about Jesus raising Lazarus from death. We talked about joy coming in the morning. After Mary and Martha went through that hard time, when Jesus came, joy came. I thought we could make something to help us remember that truth from God's Word. So, you're going to need a star. I just traced a star and cut it out. You could trace a big giant star cookie cutter. You could print out an outline of a star, or you can make your own. And then, you need some yellow paper. You fold it in half short ways or hamburger ways. When I'm teaching at school, that's what I call it. Fold it like this and you're going to put your star on it and you're going to trace your star. I'm going to get my pencil and one, two, whoops, I didn't quite go on it. I'm making my star a little bit bigger. And trace, trace. Here we go. All right, so it's all traced out. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it out. But don't, 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 don't cut on the fold. So we're gonna cut out this star. Now, I'm using a star because stars light up the sky at night. And sometimes when we're going through a hard time, it kind of feels like nighttime. But when we see those stars, when we look up, we know that God, he is still in control and he's watching out for us. 
All right, so I've almost got my star cut out. So, two more cuts. Here we go. All right, so now if I went like this, I'd have two stars. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it this way so I don't have any of my lead from my pencil showing. And in the center of this star, because we're our scripture verse is from Psalms 30, verse 5, where weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So I'm going to write joy. And if you want to help you remember that scripture verse, write Psalms 30, verse 5 on it. Write like that. Okay? Now, when I think of joy, I think of fun and excitement. So I've got some ribbon that I found and some string that I found and I'm going to tape it all inside my star. So you can arrange it anywhere you want. Whoops. So I've got some tape. I'm going to put one on that side, one on this side. And then I'm going to take my fancy string here and tape that on the inside. You can use glue, you could use staples, you could use ribbon like that you would use to wrap a present. Whatever supplies you have on hand to make it shine and sparkle and be happy, festive, joyful. All right, then you're going to need something sturdy to help you hold your star. So I have a popsicle stick. You could use a sturdy straw, a dowel, and then I'm going to tape that in the center. Then I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to glue all over this star so that when I fold it back down, it'll hold it together. There we go. My favorite glue sticks, right? All right. Got the glue on it. Then I'm going to close the star up, hold it in place, and now I have a sparkly, shiny star. And the next time you're going through something hard, and it might feel like, you know what, I don't really want to praise God, or this is just really hard and I'd rather be gloomy, get out your star and wave it around and remind yourself that weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I love you so very much. Remember, stay in the Word, stay in prayer, and stay connected. See you soon. Bye.